Angla, my man, not the result you're looking for. How are you feeling right now? Not the result I was looking. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> Got a little scratch here and there. The first one will be from Nick Atkin of South China Morning Post. Commiserations on the loss. I thought you put up a lot of heart. You showed a lot of improvement, man. Do you do you feel proud of yourself in some way that you you showed such improvement on the ground and against you know the takedowns and the submissions? Uh, I don't know, man. I need to I need to work a little bit harder. Uh, put a little more time in in the ground game. Am I proud? Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'm proud of my performance. I mean, do you feel if you fight De Ritter again, can you beat him? If you had a full camp and you faced Rainier and you focus purely on him, do you think you could you could change anything? Of course. That's what that's why we train, you know? I mean, why else will you train if we're not going to get better, you know? Do you know, have you thought yet what you want to do next? Uh, any ideas? Maybe take that big dash fight, or you just is that not in your head right now? Yeah, go back down to middleweight. Uh, stay active for this year. You know, I'm not getting younger, uh, so I want to keep improving and getting better. Uh, big Dash trilogy match would be exciting. I know you you didn't really get a chance to speak in the cage afterwards, but um, I, I know that you probably wanted to say something to all your fans back home in Myanmar who are watching you, and there's a lot of them watching now. I've got this on a live stream. If, if you just have any message you want to give them, uh, what would you want to say? Uh, sorry, I didn't get the win. Uh, pretty upset about that, you know, uh, but people in Myanmar, thank you for the support. Thank you for the love. Keep fighting. Keep doing what's right. And you know, uh, for the authorities there, you know, do what's right. We don't live a long life, you know, so and we can't take it to the grave with us. So do what's right. This question, next question, will go to Leon Jennings of Asian Persuasion MMA. You have nothing to be sorry about. You, you, you showed what warrior you were for 25 minutes. You took the fight on short notice. How tough was it going from Vitali to Rainier in less than one week's notice? Obviously, when you're preparing for Vitali. Uh, I mean. It is what it is. It wasn't tough for me to take the fight because I'm a gamer, you know, I just like to compete and just I made adjustments, but not enough. And obviously you are disappointed in your performance, but like Nick said, you, you, your defense on the ground was fantastic against someone who's such a good grappler. He he called out, he said he wanted to go up to heavyweight next. How would you see his chances in the heavyweight division? No, Brendan should fight for the light heavyweight belt against him. I'm going back to the middle anyway. So. Cool. And lastly, are there any positives you can take from it? Like I said, I think it was there's a lot of positives there, but can you see any positive right now or do you have to go away and maybe have a little break to, and think about it? I'm healthy, you know. Uh, I didn't take much damage. Besides, you know, a little scratchy in there. I'll be back in training and I want to do, you know, two or three more fights this year if one championship will allow me to. It's getting better, you know. I know this was an exciting fight, you know, but it takes two to tango. He kept wanting to grapple, so it's kind of, I need to work on that department, you know. Our next question will go to Jay Anderson of Cage Side Press. Coming out here uh, after that, I know it's not easy. First of all, I want to go to that uh, arm triangle early in the fight that you uh, got out of. How close was that? Because it did look pretty nasty there for a bit. Uh, it wasn't that tight. Uh, it, it, his arm triangle wasn't super tight. His Doris isn't super tight. Uh, None of his submissions were that tight, um, but he's got a good, good backpack. He's got a good hooks. Uh, his back, his back take is uh, super tight. You know, um, especially when he body triangles, it's just it's hard to move. But as far as like, he, he has a weird build. You know, his uh, when he goes for that single leg, his head is so so tight. Um, but the submissions themselves weren't went super tight and in comparison to the first fight did you find anything different about him tonight uh, at the higher weight no his, his style is very similar um i was surprised how like uh, how tight he was you know in every position um he didn't give much space at all technically very sound on the grappling side and like his punches went hard uh, he, even at, at a heavier weight. So like he up kicked me real hard. And uh, in the first round, he up kicked me pretty hard. He uh, hit me with some good elbows. But he, he uh, when he had that dark show, he need me too. But I, I don't feel like he had that much power. And last one from me. I mean, you spoke about staying active this year. 
going back to middleweight after a fight like this? Do you take a little bit of time off first or are you going to be right back in the gym? I don't need to. All these, like, all, all this damage is, like, superficial. Like, like, my hands feel good. Everything feels good. So I don't, I don't think I need to take much time off. Next question will go to Ivan Stewart of Dugout Philippines. Ivan, please go ahead. How has the pandemic affected your buildup for this match? Like your training, how was, how was it affected? I don't think it affected me that much. You know, I, I stayed in the gym. I mean, the fight week is always off, you know, but he, it's the same for my opponent too. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame the pandemic on anything. I don't, okay, so, I, I don't think it negatively affected me. Although, although I would like to be a little bit more active, just a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, uncontrollables um, on fight week and a lot of uncontrollables, you know, during the travel period. But as far as the training goes at the gym, um, I don't think it affected me that much. All right. After the fight, Rainer suddenly called out uh, the, the heavyweight division. So he's not challenging for the heavyweight title. Being someone who previously fought Brandon Vera, do you think he has what it takes to beat Brandon or possibly Arjun, depending on the result of their fight in May? I think stylistically, uh, Brandon is a is a bad matchup for him. Brandon's got you know great takedown defense. He's uh, he he. he uh, I mean, I train with Brandon now. Um, if if you remember, you know he's a. Uh, uh, he, he did the Greco wrestling uh, almost at Olympic level, you know, Olympic trials level. So, and, and his build is uh, just as tall as him. So stylistically, I don't think it's a good matchup for Rainier. And Rainier is uh, biting more than he can chew. Um, Rainier is obviously a bad matchup for me, you know, but uh, we'll, we'll get it back. Next question will go to Conan Altatis of Conan Daily. Hey, Ongla, uh, if given the chance, uh, which uh, division would you have? Would you like to have your rematch with Rainier first, middleweight or light, light heavyweight? No, I'm done with light heavyweight. I'm going down to middleweight after this. I'm all middleweight now. It looks like you had a, a little <laughs> talk with him inside the cage after the match. I'm just curious what you said to each other. I said, thank you for making me a better fighter. Is it correct to say that you don't like Rainier? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't he, he doesn't. He doesn't bother me. You know, I mean, as as a as a competitor, you always need somebody to push you. You know, to be a better competitor. Um, outside of that, you know, he, he does talk a lot, but he just what it is. He's just trying to sell fights, and he's trying just trying to make a name for himself. So I don't. I don't, I don't dislike him. We got one last question here from Dylan Bowker of My MMA News. Theme I've heard throughout the scrum here is that middleweight seems to be like the main priority for your last few bouts this calendar year here. How long has just maintaining like a path in one division kind of been on your mind? Like how long have you been mulling over this? Since, since I would say since 2019, you know, when I fought Brandon, it's just hard, man. The training camp was just, just, just a hard training camp. And, and, and at middleweight, it's a, it's a easier, like it suits my body a lot better. I didn't have to eat as much, you know, I didn't have to force feed myself to make that light heavyweight uh, weight class. Um, naturally, I'm not that, uh, I'm not that, my frame isn't, you know, a light heavyweight frame. I, you know, honestly, I could fight any, I could, I could, I could like, I'm, I'm down to compete against anybody, but, to be the best version of myself, I think middleweight should be the home. Yeah, absolutely. And you were talking about how the submissions weren't necessarily super tight. I'm curious, was it more of like a, I guess, you know, position over submission, functional yeah. strength kind of a thing he brought to the table? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, his, his, uh, his length is, is always an issue. You know, I've, I've always had issues with uh, longer guys that want to grapple more than uh, strike. Because with long guys that, that wants to strike, I close the distance, you know. Um, in striking range against a long guy, you have to close the distance. But this is a long guy that wants to grapple. So it's uh, stylistically, it's a harder matchup for me.